Four classes and Kansas City brought home two of the big brown trophies this past weekend. The three day event known as the Missouri State Wrestling Championships in Columbia has concluded. Our Kyle Haas was there to take it all in. This past weekend, the state's premier wrestlers invaded the floor at Mizzou Arena for three days with a plethora of Metro Sports schools claiming medals and trophies galore. In Class 4, Blue Springs used an impressive first two days to guarantee that each of their eight wrestlers who qualified would be on the podium. The Wildcats ended up putting four in the finals as Mike Hagerty's boys didn't disappoint, with three individual champions who all grabbed their second personal state championship. At 126, Daniel Lewis won by Techfall 16-0. Derek LaPaya at 138 with a third period pin, and senior Greg Hegarty ending his Wildcat career with an emphatic second period fall. Couldn't be happier about his teammates finish with back-to-back -back state championships. We had eight guys come to state and eight guys placed and uh, having four in the finals and having three of those four uh, get a tech and two pins was pretty cool. We have a lot of guys coming in next year that are gonna bring some heat too. So uh, other than that, I mean, everybody, I mean, I definitely think they can come back and win it three in a row. You know, I always try to plan out what I'm going to do after I win state, but it never seems to happen. I, uh, it just, you know, whatever happens, happens. I just get up so excited. Park Hill provided plenty of company atop the team standings from the Metro as the Trojans finished in second in the team standings, 20 points behind Blue Springs, collecting seven individual state placers and two runner-ups with Will Ernesti at 113 and Russell Coleman at 132. The Class 3 race had shades of districts from the weeks previous as Carney led Staley by three and a half points heading into finals. However, that was the time when the Bulldogs would separate themselves from the rest of the pack, with five of the six grabbing an individual state championship. Jarrett Singh at 113, Kevin Keeney at 132, Grant Leith at 138, Tanner Minder with a thrilling overtime pin of Staley's David Montoya at 145, and Morgan Fitzgerald winning at 170 pounds. Minder's match pushed Carney over the edge en route to a 17 and a half point victory. The Dogs head coach Chad Hopkins couldn't be prouder of his squad's effort. We knew that competing hard and, and just doing the best our kids individually could do was the only way to achieve what we wanted to do at the end of the year was to win a state championship. If they don't perform, that doesn't happen. You know, I'm an emotional guy. Sometimes it rubs people the wrong way. I don't care. I love our kids and, and I'll go to war. I'll go to battle uh, for any one of them. And, Sometimes it rubs people wrong, you know, but I'm an emotional guy and I wear them on my sleeve, I always have. That's never going to change. The Staley Falcons, despite coming up short on the team side of things, still were able to put five in finals as Aaron Engel was crowned champ at 152 pounds. And Staley's quarterback, Trent Hosick, capped off his senior campaign with a 29-0 record and a heavyweight state championship. Finishing off the season at the heaviest weight class was the plan all along, says Hosick. I guess now that it's all over, uh, I can tell you the plan was at the beginning for me to wrestle heavyweight. Uh, we wanted people to think that I was going 220 in order to maybe uh, clear some people out and uh, maybe make the way a little bit easier for Bailey. And uh, you know, we think that worked and then we bumped up to heavyweight and, and it ended up working well for us. It's a great blessing that I can give back to my family and give back to my coaches and all the people who have invested into my life through wrestling and through other things. And this is just a great way to, uh, to give back to them, so I'm very happy. Then the aptly named Northman came along for the third place finish as a team just ahead of Neosho, as Oak Park claimed titles at 106 with Noah Tini's second individual state championship, 120 where junior Brad Perkins remains untouchable in high school, and 182 pounds where Hasim Omari grabbed a state title as well, doing it without losing a single match this year. Amari considered this season all about redemption. I was kind of on a mission. I mean, my last year, last time I'm going to be in here, I wanted to go out with a bang. Rest like I always do. Do what I do, and I win. It's not always about quantity. It's quality. We came here to win it like we always do. Took third. It's not that bad. Seven guys. Three guys in the finals, three state champs, third place. We did as good as we could. In class two, Oak Grove was as advertised putting six Panthers on the medal stand and two into finals, with Taylor Brenninger at 152 and Chase Rissinger grabbing a state championship, going head over heels for the black and orange. The Panthers were able to claim a second place finish just behind Kirksville. The marquee class of the night came from those at 285 pounds, where at class two, Pleasant Hills' Tolly Burney 
upended previously unbeaten and K-State football signee Travis Britz of Harrisonville with a third period pin. Then there's future Mizzou Tiger and defending Class 4 heavyweight champion Evan Bame of Lee Summit West, who was upended by Donnell Walker of Parkway South in the third period by way of pin. All in all, a great weekend for those teams from the Kansas City metro area. As 68 locals placed in the top six, 17 of those being individual champions. Two teams claiming state championships on their own right, with three teams finishing as runner-up. Kyle Haas was there, now Kyle Haas is here. That's the magic of television. All right, what's the difference between the Missouri meet and the Kansas State meet, the Kansas State meet coming up this weekend? Uh, a couple big differences. One, it's all in one area, and that mm -hmm. makes a big difference unto itself. But then you also factor in that everybody can kind of uh, watch it, and it's over three days. So guys are actually eating a little bit more because of the every day they have to certify their or recertify their weight and weigh mm -hmm. in. So guys are a little bit uh, healthier uh, by day three when they're actually wrestling the placing matches. And I know Kansas has done it their own way, and mm -hmm. it's a little bit different. And geography plays a big role into it. And Class sizes do a big thing, but I kind of like uh, growing up in Hayes or being in school in Hayes. You're able to kind of see those three, two, one, yep. and they they like to be kind of unto themselves and by, by themselves. All right. Speaking of Kansas State, is this weekend and Lansing Lion is going for wrestling glory. Tell us all about Bo Purcell here. Uh, Purcell, a heck of a wrestler. Uh, he's won three state titles previously. Obviously, 103, he was a state champion, and and what has now become a really stacked weight class. To look back at how good that 103 class was. The four guys he beat on the way to that championship have gone on to be placed uh, right now in their current rankings. At 112, he won it his sophomore year, 119 last year, 36 in one year, and this year 40 and 0. Uh, we saw this match at the Bobcat Classic. He's a heck of a wrestler, heck of a kid, uh, yeah. really down to earth. So uh, wish Bo Purcell all the best. It's a rare company he could uh, qualify in if he's able to uh, pr provide it. Now we look at Kansas Six. Or, and you've got a battle between Gardner Edgerton and Lawrence really to see who can who has the best shot of unseating uh, Manhattan. Manhattan comes in, they've uh, qualified 14, uh, all 14 wrestlers in all their weight classes. But you know between Gardner and uh, uh, Lawrence, I actually see Gardner produ producing more points because they've got so many guys that will go out and get the tech falls and get the major decisions and get the pins. Um, you know, guys like TJ Stokes and Dustin Williams, but that's not to say Lawrence doesn't have heavy hitters themselves. They've got a guy in Reese Wright Conklin going to Newman University next uh, year. He's number one in 182, 34 and two this year, but those two losses, one was off of an injury, uh, was disqualified for a match, and another one was a controversial ending. Uh, but either way, both teams have an opportunity of kind of unseating Manhattan and knocking around Garden City there. And then you look at 5A, and really St. Thomas Aquinas is going to have to carry the banner for Kansas in that. They're the only team on the east side of the state uh, kind of in discussion with the rest of 5A that has a genuine idea. The rest of the teams uh, rank number one in, in 5A, and not just 5A in all classes. It goes Arkansas City, St. Thomas Aquinas, Newton, and then Andover Central. And those four are really kind of sandwiched together. Um, you know, Ark City qualified. Uh, 13 this past weekend, but they may only be able to wrestle 12. Had a couple injuries. Uh, Aquinas qualifies 11. Newton and Andover Central kind of qualify just about as many, so it's really a matter of how many guys they'll be able to pull. But you see a guy right here, Eric Mason, he was able to get a big pin. He mm -hmm. is a guy who's going to get those bonus points. He, Lukinas, and Isaac Dolgarian are the three that I kind of see being state champions for uh, the Saints. All right, Kansas State this weekend, and it is our Kansas City, okay? Not Arkansas City, so such, shut your trap, all right? Thanks very much, Kyle Haas. We appreciate it as we go to break here. Wichita North, Wichita Heights, it's happening on Thursday. Yeah, they're going to keep playing, even though Heights lost the basketball game. Then Friday, it's back up here in Kansas City. Sunflower League, Smeese and Shiny Mission South. And then over to Missouri, Class 5, District 16, Lee Summit West's district. Ruskin in that one. Rockhurst as well. The final on that on Saturday. We're back after this.